Good morning. Top of the morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Just watched a video by Freeman asking the question in the thumbnail, and it, the question was posed to Freeman during the videos. Why don't you ask permission? And that's a really good question. Um, We've seen a lot of instances, or at least maybe I have, this week of auditors being difficult inside buildings. There was an auditor, I don't remember which one, he was inside of a DMV. It was a weird DMV because somebody had like a will that they had to flip over or something. But there are people, people, you know, giving essentially private information back and forth. And the auditor was in there causing trouble, causing problems. I don't think you have a right to film inside of a police station. Any First Amendment analysis that I do typically ends up with, no, you don't. Police just need a, a reason. Doesn't have to be a good reason. They just need a reason that's viewpoint neutral. And bada boom, bada bing. No filming for you. So asking permission would be the way to get in their filming. If you don't have a right, you need permission. But even if you do have a right, sometimes it's nice just to be polite. Hey, you know, do you mind if I smoke? You got the right to smoke there, but you might be annoying. You might be interfering with other people's enjoyment of the setting. So asking, do you mind if I smoke, is the polite thing to do. Just like you might be interfering with the flow of work inside of a government office asking if you could film is just a polite thing to do. But again, I don't think you have a right to film in a police station. City Hall, I think you have more. It's less likely that a filming restriction in my head, it's less likely in a City Hall that a filming restriction would be reasonable. I don't know if they're handling any sensitive information in a city hall. You know, like in a police station, you might be getting a report from a, a battered woman or a abused minor. You know, it's supposed to be a safe space. It's supposed to be where kids can go if they've been abused. And having an asshole in the lobby with a camera might deter that kid from going in there. It might not be reasonable, and I'm sure some of the auditor knuckleheads are going to say, well, I have the right to film there so that kid can piss off. Eh, thank God that most of the country doesn't see things the way the asshole side of the auditing community sees things. I think certainly, certainly you have less reason to film in a police station than you do in a in a post office. And even if you want to drag Turner v. Driver inside a police station, even if, even if you want to drag Glick inside of a police station or Fordyce v. Seattle inside a police station, which they weren't, and they're not intended for that kind of analysis, even if you do that, all of those decisions talk about reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. And a police station is a place. So all it has to be, even under those analyses, not even under the Adderley, but under the Fordyce or Turner or Glick analysis, just has to be a reasonable place restriction. And I still think that works. I still think police stations work. Now, of course, you can 
you could fight it, but I have seen at least one auditor get criminal. Nope, two auditors. There was a, not only was there Padilla, but there was some other guy who was trying to film into the secured area of a police parking lot from the police par- from the front publicly accessible police parking lot. He was told several times to leave. Finally, they came out, detained him, and criminally trespassed him. Took his information, wrote up a criminal trespass warning. So if he ever shows up there again, he can't deny that he was firmly and solidly trespassed from the property. So, of course, a lot of that's going to depend on the state trespassing laws or the municipal trespassing laws. But uh, it is and can be done. I thought it was humorous that uh, Freeman had to resort to a lie. I thought that was weird. I thought his magic jammies would start burning him. But he had to say that he was part of a press agency. He didn't say, he didn't start off with he's an independent reporter. He said he's with an agency, a news agency. I think that's a lie. I think that's a lie. I think uh, I think someone has lost all of their faith in their little church, and now they're lying. Not just drinking caffeine, but lying. How far have we fallen, Mr. Freeman? How far have we fallen? So yeah, I don't, I don't believe that uh, Mr. Freeman, and he's, he also wanted to play the game while I was being nice. I was being polite. I didn't see him being nice or polite. I saw him being passive aggressive. Uh, He asked the cop if he's violated anybody's rights. Oh, but I was being nice and polite. I'm just asking questions. That is interesting. You know, at the end, he threw his kick rocks in there a couple times. His little homage to High Desert. Kind of stupid. It kind of shows you how tolerant the police were. I mean, he was sitting there like, yeah, I don't understand why why the people in the city hall were so nice. And these people, I don't know. I just don't understand. Maybe because the... Uh, the police deal with assholes more often than people in the city hall do. Could that be? That cop, that first cop, the sheriff that came out, he pegged you for who you are real quick. And he stopped talking. That was pretty glorious, I thought. Who do you think was making eye contact as uh, Freeman was zooming in on his uh, blue line flag? Who do you think was just standing there staring, making eye contact, being the alpha? And who do you think was looking everywhere? Who broke at the end? Well, this is awkward. Uh. Speaking of the blue line flag, I know everybody in this community thinks that uh, the blue line flag means that, that police officers will back each other and they won't knock each other out or testify or, you know, otherwise interfere with a a bad cop doing bad things. That's not actually what it stands for. I mean, obviously you could put your own interpretation on it, but to the cops, my understanding is that they believe it symbolizes that they are the, the thing that's standing between the criminals and the population. And police are a very small minority of the population. I think there's there's less than a million police in the U.S. at any given time. I think it's less than 500,000, actually. So about one in 100 residents is a police officer. So it's not a whole, it's not a huge percentage of the population. But that is what the blue line stands for to them. At least that's what they represent to me, to us. If you Google the the thin blue line flag and its meaning, that's what you'll come up with. Well, that and the people who think it means that they're not going to narc on each other. (laughs) And they might. I mean, I'm sure some of them don't. Any, 
any human institution is going to contain failures of some sort. You can't get around it. It's just the way it rolls. Anyway, my hand has once again gone numb. I've made it past 10 minutes this time. My hand is fine as long as it's moving, but as soon as it's standing basically still holding this phone, it just starts going numb. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Um, hope everybody is getting their plans ready for Thanksgiving. Obviously, around those times, I probably won't be recording. But uh, I should give you another couple days today and tomorrow, or I'm sorry, Tuesday and Wednesday. I should be able to, to bang another couple out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.